going on everyone it's Patrick from Purple Park Studios and today we're going to do something a little bit different today I'm going to be breaking down my entire process of how I made this short film using Blender. So we're going to take a look at a few things today. We're going to look at the Blender sessions, yes, but we're also going to take a look at how I organized everything on my hard drive. And that is really important because when you're doing something, now this isn't even a big short film, but if you're doing a short film that's this length or even longer, you're going to want to be organized. So I'm going to select Purple Park Studios folder and I'm going to scroll down to short film four. And inside this folder, you'll see a bunch of different things. Now these two items here with the Premiere logo. This is just a before verse after for social media. And this one up here is the actual session that I use to do the color grading and little final edits. I like to do that in Premiere Pro. And then right up here is obviously pretty self-explanatory, a test watch and then a progress test two. And right here is a clip that will be in the second part of the short film whenever that gets done. <laughs> and then right up here, if I click on this, you'll see that it's gonna be empty. There's no audio or anything like that, and it's a little bit glitchy right now. So what the purpose of this is for is for doing the sound design too. So I will put this video into FL Studio, and then I would write to the video, compose the music and stuff around the video. And it's just, I like using FL Studio because it's meant for music production. So I like to use FL Studio to do a lot of the sound design for my stuff. And then I would say that this section up here is probably like the most important, or at least this right here as far as my workflow. So one of the first things I do after I film the footage is I put it into a folder that I call green screen footage. And if we click on day one here, you can see it has all the footage in here, or at least most of it. And then right below it is the keyed out footage. So after I key out footage, I will put it in here. And like I said, this is most of the clips minus a few that I had filmed previously, like in the months beforehand, they're in a whole nother folder. And then up here, we'll just skip up to the top here. I have the After Effects session, which I only really use After Effects to key out my footage because I just really like using After Effects. And if you don't know how to do that, I actually have a tutorial that I'll link into this in the description. And then we have this folder right down here, which is the Blender renders. So everything that I rendered out, so everything that I rendered out minus a few clips, I would store in here. So it just makes it really nice because then if I need to grab something, I can just go right to this folder and know right where everything is. And then the last part is the Blender sessions. So I'll open up this folder and you can see I have mostly all of my Blender sessions that I use, like I said, minus one or two clips that I had done previously. So let's actually take a look at a couple of these here. Um, some of these are from like this one. And I think this one here, they're going to be in the second part of the short film <laughs> again, whenever that gets done. But let's take a look at the hanger right here. So we, I have two of them. I have take off prep and then I have the hanger because there was different things happening in both of those scenes. So I needed different session to just do things a little bit differently, it just made it a lot easier. So let's click on the hanger and see what that's like. All right, so we're here inside the hanger and this is the set. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you the clip right here. So you can take a look at the clip. So you can see in the clip, just because of the camera angle, I didn't need to model all the you know extra stuff. What I have in the clip works just fine. So if we go right down here, I'll click on this. So in Blender, if you click, at least on the newer version, or the newest version, if you click on an object, you should be able to navigate around it. So if you're like trying to navigate around this area and you're just frustrated why you can't quite get on it, just select an object that's near where you wanna navigate around and then you'll be able to navigate around very smoothly. And we can see I have the footage of myself walking right here. So if I go ahead and hit play, I'm only getting about like 10, maybe 11 frames per second right now. But you can see I'm walking out here and you'll notice my foot's bleeding into the ground a bit and there is some distortion here from the keying. The take that I filmed on the green screen wasn't that good. And I had a lot of issues when I was keying it out, but I knew that for this shot, it wasn't going to matter as much. Cause if we look through the camera, let me just find the right camera. Yeah, and if we go to rendered mode, you can see that you'll never even notice it just because of the camera angle. You never notice it at all. And I knew that that was going to be the case, so I wasn't bothered by it. But if this was a situation where I knew that I was going to need to see my feet, then I would have definitely corrected it or redone the shot. But when it's just one person making a short film that's like only a few minutes long, but this still took a lot of work. It just made more sense for me to not redo this part when I knew you weren't even going to really see the feed anyway. And I had so many other clips and scenes that I needed to work on. 
but I really like the way this uh, shot turned out. Uh, it's one of my favorite shots. It might actually be my favorite shot in the entire thing, but you can just see this thing here. You know, I have some glass here just to let some light come through this side using an HDRI to light the environment. And I really, really, really love how this looks. This just looks really cool. And of course we can't forget this little robot guy that makes his way in. I really hope we get to do a bit more with him later on. Oh. <laughs> And if this ever happens to you where uh, your work with images is planes and it goes purple or pink, all you have to do is hit file, save and reload. I actually don't want to save this, so I'm not going to do it. But if you needed to, you could do file, save and reload. So let's actually jump into another scene here. Um, I don't think we need to jump into the hangar takeoff prep because that's basically the same scene, just more focused on the ship. Let's jump into interior clip because Dry Planet and the Mech Squad, those are, I don't want to give those away just yet because they're going to be in the upcoming film. So this was one of the most challenging scenes in the entire uh, short film. And just to make things easier, I'm going to turn off the room here just because when I keep zooming out, I keep getting stuck in the room and I can't see anything. So, but I'm going to turn on the door, which I ended up, I had this door here, which let me show you this. So I'll go to frame one. I originally had the camera following this little robot through the doors, uh, but I just didn't like the way it looked. I was going to have these doors open up. That's a rough animation there, you know, and have him come through. But I just wasn't really feeling it the way it looked. When, when I got rid of the doors, it looked so much uh, bigger, the scene. So let me turn on the command center here. And we'll turn on our images as planes. There. And let me actually go to rendered mode for this, or maybe we'll go to look dev mode. So here we are in look dev mode. And if I just jump to my camera here, I'll go back to the start, hit play. So I'm only getting about like, again, nine, 10 frames per second here, but this is the clip where he comes through. So I think it might just be easier. I'll just play the clip here real quick. So I really just liked having it more of an open feel versus again with these doors on here. I just, it, it just coming through the camera, you know, it just, I don't know, it made it feel a little bit more closed off and I really wanted this to feel bigger. Sorry that it's glitching out here on my laptop. And then for this scene, um, what I did was when I wasn't using this, cause at one point here, let's see, I, yeah, I turned around. Let me hide the camera here. So in order to get the dialogue shots, I just use my method uh, that I had showed in a previous video, which I will also link in the description about working with multiple green screen clips in the same scene. So if I turn off this images as planes here, you can see down here, I've got uh, the images as planes three, which if I turn that on, those are the ones where the camera was up close for the dialogue. And there's another one here, images as planes two. And I just tried to match all of the different dialogue clips in size up as best as I could. So I really hope that this video was helpful. I tried to keep it short, just show you a little bit of my process and how I go about making this kind of stuff. And this was one of the bigger scaled videos that I had done, which if you haven't watched it, I will put a link in the description, but I would really love to do some bigger scale projects in the future. And I am working on some new tutorials and videos that aren't quite ready yet. So I thought that doing something like this would just be a cool way to kind of still put a video out and give something useful and helpful to the Blender community. And yeah, I just really appreciate everyone who's been supporting the channel. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.